Hello and welcome. We're so glad you're here. If you're with us on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to get notifications when we have new videos. If you're with us on Zoom, drop a hi in the chat. We'd love to say hello back. And to you and people, all to you who are here in person, hello, everybody. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and sign our guest book either in the lobby or at oakcliffuu.org slash guest. Today's sermon is Living Through Our Legacies, Stories Handed Down from the Ancestors with Beth Furry. All right, y'all, maybe you can tell by the outfit and the mood lighting, but it is finally here. I am so excited and not just about my birthday, which is awesome, but also tonight is our annual haunted forest and our brand new fall market. Oh, I've been talking about this and I really am excited about it. Please plan to come. It, the fall market is from four to nine, the haunted forest from seven to nine, and we have drag story time at five, six, and seven o'clock. We also have crafting and pumpkins and food and just all sorts of amazing stuff. Very, very much worth showing up and telling all of your friends about it. Uh, we are still taking volunteers. We could always use some last minute help. So if you want to help out, Find Jade tonight or email him at fallmarket at oakcliffuu.org. Uh, we are also taking donations of food and drinks. So if you want to provide that, that would be great. And if for some reason you just can't make it tonight, you will miss the fall market. But there is one more chance for the Haunted Forest next Sunday uh, from 7 to 9. So plan to attend that. Or if you'd like to volunteer, we are still taking volunteers on our sign up genius, um, set down, set up, tear down, um, and scare all the happy little people coming through the forest. There's lots to do. Every little bit helps. So if you can, please do. All right. If you missed last week's parish meeting, you missed out on a lot of great stuff. Um, all of our committees and ministries went up there and told you all the amazing things that we have going on. So if you'd like to know more about that, if you'd like to see the video, you can find it on our website under the members section. You can also find out who all the awards recipients were for the Harry Jones and Sally Jones Awards by checking out the e-blast. Well, while you're on the e-blast, what else can you find there? Let me tell you. You can find information about the Pledge Drive, Workday Wednesdays, the Haunted Forest and Fall Market. Um, and it is time for our annual Syracuse Cultural Workers Fundraiser. There's a lot of great stuff there that can get you started early on your holiday shopping. So go and check that out. It helps our church. Yay! It is Sunday and the fun doesn't stop after the sermon. No, no, no. We have lots more stuff, especially today. But we have talk back at 1115. That's where we all sit around and talk about the sermon and related topics. You always get something out of it, whether you'd like to participate or just sit and listen. We also have adult religious exploration with Sarah. She is doing building your own theology. All right, there are no member anniversaries today, but that doesn't mean that there isn't just so much fun to be had. So to all of you out there, I hope that you have a very happy Sunday. And I really do hope that I will see you tonight at our fall market and haunted forest. Happy Sunday, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yay. Welcome to the services of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff here in Dallas, Texas. And it's so wonderful to see everybody here in the sanctuary and a special welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom. Uh, there's so much going on today. Big day. Uh, we have the fall market, which is going to include several vendors, and we're also having a psychic fair. And uh, then we're having the Haunted Forest today. So we got all kinds of things going on. I hope y'all can join us. Uh, this is the first year I get to uh, go walk the uh, Haunted Forest as a paying customer instead of a, what do they call them? Am I a ghoul? Ghoul? Yeah, so instead of a ghoul, I get to go in there as a normal person this year. So that's going to be kind of fun. Well, yeah, okay, you know, normal person. Okay, all right. <laughs> Anyway, come, come join us. We'll have lots of fun with that. Newcomers to Unitarian Universalism often ask what we're all about. We're different from most churches in that we serve and welcome people of all faiths. We are a non-creedal church. And what that means is that we don't have all the answers. 
Rather, we support one another's search for truth and meaning, drawing from different religions, philosophies, and traditions. We also learn from each other, and we welcome your input at our talk back after the service. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you, spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. Que esta luz que ahora encendemos nos inspire a usar nuestras dones y poderes para cenar y no para herir, para ayudar y no para impedir, para bendecir y no para maldecir, para servir de ti espíritu de amor, compasión y perdón. Our opening words this morning are Come Sit by Our Fire by Jennifer Kitchen. Come sit by our fire and let us share our stories. Let us hear your tales of far-off lands, wanderer, and I will tell you of my travels. Share your experience of the holy with me, worshiper, and I will tell you of that which I find divine. Come and stay, lover of leaving, for ours is no caravan of despair, but of hope. We would hear your stories of grief and sorrow as readily as those of joy and laughter. For there is a time and a place for it and a hearing for all the stories of this world. Stories are the breath and the word of the spirit of life. That power we name love. Come, for our fire is warm and we have seats for all. Come, again and yet again. Come speak to me of that which fills your heart, what engages your mind, and what resides in your soul. Come, let us worship together. is no care of the van of despair come yet again come Because we love one another, we honor each individual's spiritual journey. We celebrate life's abundance in service to each other, our community, and the world. We connect with each other in love, respect, and acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. Porque nos amamos una al otro, 
Honoramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo. Celebramos la abundancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y excepción. Así que hacemos pacto. You are not alone with your sorrow, just as I am not alone with mine. In community, a burden of a heavy heart is shared, and a burden shared is a burden lightened. At this time, we invite you to publicly post your sorrows and prayer requests to the Zoom chat or send those to Facebook Messenger. I breathe in. I breathe in peace when I breathe out. I breathe out love when I breathe in. share our joys with one another. A joy shared is a joy celebrated throughout our community. Uh, please share your joys publicly by posting them on the Zoom chat or send them to Facebook Messenger or speak them aloud. Good morning. Good morning. If there are any children here who would like to come up here, sit up here and listen to stories, I have marshmallows. Um, obviously, you've been around a while. <laughs> and you can sit up here and pretend to roast them. They won't let me have real fire up here. I don't know why. They think I might burn down the building. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to tell stories. Storytelling is as old as time. And I always thought, like to think that fire was discovered. Thank you. Not because people wanted to heat up their food and, and get warm, but because they wanted to sit around the fire and tell stories. Now, when I was a kid, the fire always meant camp, either 4-H or church camp, and we'd take people on snipe hunts, and that was always fun. Well, for us, not the person going on the snipe hunt, but... <laughs> and... Uh, so one of the stories they used to tell around the fire that the um, indigenous Native Americans, I come up from, I'm from Iowa, so I know that area of the story is better than anybody, anything else. So they would tell the children about the Wendigo. The Wendigo was a scary creature who would come, and some, some tribes thought it was a shaman who turned evil after he died and became skin and bones and he would stalk people and then he'd eat them. And 
and this blessing for the children was to not be greedy. Now, that seems a little extreme to me, but you know, that's how we sold it out. So, one of my favorite stories growing up was Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan was this huge man that walked around Minnesota, Iowa, Kansas, the Midwest, and he personally dug the Missouri and the Mississippi River by um, with using the help of his big blue ox, Babe. And he would go around helping people. He was a big lumberjack. And Babe was a huge blue ox that he found. And there was a cow, I think, too. But I don't remember that one. Yeah. But the reason this story always meant so much to me was because there was a statue of Babe and, Babe and uh, Paul Bunyan in Bemidji, Minnesota, where my mother was born. And my grandfather helped build those statues. He was on the uh, committee that built those. So I always loved that story. And we went go up there every summer or two summers and see those and go back to my mother's birthplace. And that was always special. And so back in ancient times, one of the ways they told stories was through art. And so when we have something that means a lot to us, like such as this object, this is wampum. This was given to me by the member of, a ta of the Tema tribe because he had, was lost and ha didn't understand why he could not get out of, it was very, very spiritual, but he just was not able to live in this world very well. And he became confused. And so I helped him to find that balance between the spiritual and the physical world. And he gave me this, and I was named part of their tribe. And so this, this means a lot to me. And I think everybody probably has something like that that means something to them. And if you'd like to come up and tell us a story, you're more than welcome. Any story. I mean, I got a ton of them, but. <laughs> you have something? Um, actually, no, I don't have no story, actually. You don't have any story. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of one I know, but I know I don't. Okay. <laughs> so, this is going to be a short story because I was hoping people would share their stories. Um, so, I guess related to this is when I got down here, I got to know one of my mentors and very close friends happened to be an elder in the Lakota tribe. And I spent a lot of time with her and talked to her. And she told me that I was a spider grandmother and they welcomed me into that tribe as a person that they, they found it as wise, and so that meant, always meant a lot to me. One of the things about doing counseling and working with people is that uh, it's all about stories. Everything in my life is about a story from somebody, and counseling is listening to a story and picking out the things that they don't realize they're saying or the things that you think they might mean, and bringing that up and guiding them through what they think they're saying or what they mean and understanding where they're coming from. Okay. I think there's something wrong with this fire because my marshmallow is very underdone. <laughs> Anyway, I know that you all have stories, and I'm going to tell a story about an, some experiences I've had at this church, and you all have them. So I remember the first time, not the first time, not the first time we ever came into this church, but a couple years later when we came back into this church. There were, um, it wasn't a big crowd, it was very small, but the women 
the women were all either knitting or crocheting through the service. And I, I loved that, and I felt like I was home. It felt so good and homey, and it reminded me of, of the women that I grew up with. He's always seeing them do these things and sit there and crochet during a sermon or whatever. Um, and I remember um, the woman who, who was at the piano and singing. And we got acquainted because I started joining in the music. And at first, you know, it wasn't quite meshing with the two of us together, but... Over time, Glorianne and I just came to love and adore one another. To the point where several years ago, Glorianne um, told me that she, she'd never had children, but she told me that I was her daughter. And I told her, when she leaves this lifetime, she's got to come and, and tell me you know, that she's good and what she's doing and, and help me along. And let me tell you, if you, it, it, I, probably everybody here knows, but if you don't, Glorianne is dealing with dementia. She's, what, 90 now? She's 90 years old. She's dealing with dementia. And I remember a few years ago um, when we had our choir going, I gave Glorianne a solo. And before church started, she had no idea what we were singing. She didn't know what we were doing. She said, what am I supposed to do? And I said, Glorianne, don't worry about it. Just relax. Once you hear the introduction, you'll know what to do. And she did. She came right in on cue and sang her solo so beautifully, like she's, she still has the music in her. She has not forgotten the music, and she knew exactly what to do. And when I think of these stories, my heart is just full. My heart is full. And I'm so grateful for this place that made those experiences possible. Okay, I'm gonna work on my marshmallow some more. <laughs> Okay, I have a story too. So this story is the two foxes. So there was two foxes, fox one, fox two. They weren't mom and dad, they weren't brother or sister. They, want, they were just two foxes trying to find food. And fox two found, climbed up a hill and saw a lots of sheep. And he told Fox One there were sheep there. And he and Fox Two came up with a plan. We waited until the until the sheep were distracted by something, then they would come down and eat them. But Fox One was impatient and ran off and, and they lost all the sheep. The moral of the story is don't be impatient. You had to wait hey, to find what's gonna happen. Alright. <laughs> All right, I didn't plan on telling any stories. My family isn't aware of our stories very much, which is kind of a sad thing. However, it did occur to me, um, a, little, a pleasant experience, interesting to me, that occurred during our beach vacation uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, my father-in-law, who passed away earlier this year uh, from complications of dementia, as it is, when he was still in his home, uh, being cared for by his wife, he developed a habit of secreting coins in all kinds of places around the house, pennies, nickels, dimes, in the couch cushions, between the pages of books, in drawers, under things. We didn't really have a reason for this. It was just an activity he did. And long after he moved out of the house into a care home, in fact, even after he had passed away peacefully and asleep in that care home some uh, year and a half later, my mother-in-law continued to find these pennies and nickels and dimes all over the house, 
just all over the place. And so she started putting them all in one place as, they, as she turned them up. She had a little corner table in her dining kitchen nook that had uh, some lovely decorative things on it. And she had a little tray there and she just kind of started piling up all these loose coins that were constant remembrances of my father-in-law. Now, how does this relate to the beach? It relates to the beach because it was my mother-in-law and my father-in-law in his prime who financed and organized the annual family beach trip to Galveston every year. And there's been a few years in these in the more, more recent decade when this didn't happen for various health reasons they had or things going on with other members of the family. But this year, um, even though my father-in-law had passed and even though my mother-in-law had some schedule conflicts going on, she wanted to finance a beach trip. So she provided the rental money for a beach house for our family unit and my brother-in-law's family unit. There were some other families that were invited, but things came up, didn't make it. About six of us ended up in the beach house for a lovely, restful October uh, in Galveston vacation. And one day, uh, and it was very different because this is the first time my mother-in-law has never been there. Part of it, the reason was because she didn't want to be there without my father-in-law for the first time. But So it was very different, but it was also very wonderful. And one day, I walked into the living room of the beach house, and there on an end table next to the sofa was about a dozen coins stacked up, <laughs> nickels and pennies and dimes. I have no idea where they came from. I have no idea why they ended up stacked there on the corner of the table, but it could not help but make me think of and appreciate my, my father-in-law's presence even in his absence. So small things, big, big impact. Thank you. Beth, we have two storytellers on Zoom. Awesome. Um, I'm going to tell a story um, from my nephew who passed away uh, September 1st this year. And we had his, uh, we got together to remember him a few weeks ago. And this is a story his sister told us. Uh, the little things. He definitely connects with the little things. Um, so uh, they, my, sister, uh, my niece said that they had this cat. I think they were in the habit of taking in stray animals. And they had this one cat that was uh, very unfriendly. <laughs> Every time you'd walk by, she said it would hiss at you or swipe at you. And it just wasn't friendly with anybody. But one day, her brother, my nephew Jaron, said, I'm going to hug that cat every day. And he did. He hugged it every day. And a year later, it was just a very nice, sweet cat. And I understand that's the only cat that his parents have now. Its name is Jack, uh, for jack o lantern I think. So anyways, just uh, the little things can, can make a difference. Just a hug a day. That's the story. I have others if you need more, but I'll let somebody else. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Oh, hi. I have the story about this right here. This is my special blanket. And when I was your age, Stennett, my mom, who's your Bonna, made me a little bitty blanket that went in my crib. And I loved my blanket and I slept with it and I carried it around until there were little holes all over my blanket. That's how much I loved it. And what my mommy did was she took that blanket and she made it a little bit bigger. And she fixed all the holes and put patches on it. And it got bigger so that when I got into a big kid bed, it fit my big kid bed. And I loved my special blanket and it kept me warm and cozy and comfy and it made me feel safe. And I loved it so much that it got little holes in it and it got worn out. And so what my mommy did again was she took that blanket 
and she made it a little bit bigger and she put all the patches on it. Oh, let's see. She put all these little patches on it to get, cover up the holes until it was a great big blanket. And it was the warmest, it's still the warmest blanket I have in my whole house, believe it or not. And I took this blanket with me to college and it kept me warm and made me feel safe and made me feel like I was at home and loved. And one of the things that this teaches me is that love can grow over time and that things that are special to you, even though they change and they wear out, if they change, they can still change to be good and to be bigger and to be better. And they can keep you warm and toasty and help you feel loved and to remember you've been loved all along. And that's my story. Thank you, Renee. So Autumn's story about uh, Gloria reminded me of the last vaudeville night we had. And she wanted to do some tap dancing. And, uh, but she was scared to go out by herself. I've never tamped out, tap danced before in my life, but I came out on stage with her and followed her while she tap danced. And that was a lot of fun. Anything else? Too late now. something juicy. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you about Alicia as a rabbit. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. I was thinking when you were talking about, you know, coming here, um, I told y'all last night that our, well, I guess yesterday afternoon, our power went out. And uh, it reminded me, you know, I brought back memories of the that freeze when the power went out for a week. But it was beautiful. Uh, the weather was so nice. Uh, uh, you know, the blowing in, the wind blowing in from the south, and it was just so pleasant, so very pleasant. And it made me think of fall. And this is a time of year when we start, you know, thinking about traditions and holidays and so forth. And I, I was looking through my phone because we didn't have a TV, and I came across this picture of uh, that 30 years ago at a Halloween party we had over in Hope Chapel. And it was me dressed up as a cat, you know, I mean, I had a little nose and ears and my long hair. And for some reason I had a cross on, I don't know what I was going for, you know, Christian cat, I don't know. But, uh, and I'm holding baby Marisol and she's got this little pumpkin kind of cape or something uh, that had been handed me down from Alicia as a baby. And there's Harry Jones hovering over both of us like this, at, dressed up as a pirate, and Marisol's like, you know, <laughs> looking like this at him. And I just remembered how much fun we had at that, that carnival, and years later wanted to do one here, and we did, uh, I guess, was that three years ago that we did that? Yeah, so we had another one here. And... Um, you know, I thought of all the Christmases that we've had here. And one of the favorite things that we used to do for me was the uh, white elephant exchange. And oh my goodness, we had so much fun with that. You know, you never know if you're going to open up something fabulous or something really silly. And I remember one year uh, I brought, or somebody brought this cool shirt in, and it was Jesus holding the cross with you know, all sorts of painful looking thorns and something. And there was a big fight over that shirt. We all, and I ended up with it. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up with it, but everyone wanted this, this shirt with Jesus on it. And I remember years where, you know, people, grownups would fight with children to get those toys. I mean, it got kind of brutal, but it was fun. It was always fun. And, uh, and then the Easter, we, I remember one year, um, we were talking about trying to do, instead of a candy, you know, hiding the Easter eggs, we were talking about uh, kids and their teeth and sugar and all that. And somebody, and I don't remember who, suggested, well, why don't we hide fruits and vegetables? And I'm like, 
no kid's going to want to go looking for fruits and vegetables. That's the kind of stuff they have to eat at home all the time. And yet they did. They went crazy, you know, carrots and squash and... You know, <laughs> You know, who would have thought? And it turned out to be a wonderful thing. I, I hope we can bring that back. I think that was a lot of fun. And then the one from Alicia, get to Alicia years later, we did that again. And Alicia dressed up as a rabbit. We had, and I, I've been wondering if we still have that around here, a pink rabbit suit, big furry. Do we have, does anyone know if we still have that rabbit suit? No, but we've got the photos. Yes, we do have photos. Yeah, uh, one year years ago when I was this, I don't know how I ended up, probably because nobody else wanted to do it that year, I was a social justice person, and uh, but we called it, uh, what was it, concerns and social concerns, social concerns, and so I ended up as social concerns, but I'm more of a mercy person than a justice person. I put on that pink rabbit suit and did a wrap, I was the wrapping rabbit, trying to get solicitations to give I think it was dolls or stuffed toys to Parkland Hospital. So, you know, it's pretty hardcore. So a middle-aged white woman in a rabbit suit trying to rap, you know, in church. <laughs> and uh, so, but, um, and years later, you know, uh, we needed another rabbit for Easter. And I tried that rabbit suit on and man, it made me look really old. You know, I mean, he, you know, you don't think about, well, this rabbit suit makes me look old, but it did. And Alicia was about 16 years old and just gorgeous. And she put on that rabbit suit and cutest rabbit I've ever seen. And she did a real good job with the kids and the vegetables and everything else. So I am just so happy to be part of this church and to have had, you know, such a history, uh, having been here so long and seen my kids, you know, grow up in this church and celebrate fun times. And I'm just thrilled that we're right here on the, you know, the cusp of another holiday season at the church. Thank you. <clears throat> First of all, yes, I was a very cute rabbit. Um, but what was fun was they were like carrots with the long stems. They weren't just like the little carrots. It was like, you know, the big leafy greens. And it was the first time I ever had a kumquat because somebody brought a bunch of kumquats. And so we were hunting tiny little kumquats. <laughs> So that was cool. So my little quick story, because holiday season, um, when I was really little, um, probably eight years old or so, me and my cousin were here, and they had, it was when um, Charity was painted completely black on the inside, and so the teenagers did a haunted house, and I remember standing in line, and I was that kid who, like, loved horror movies, and I loved scary stuff, you know, and... Um, Hi. <laughs> and, but I walked up to it and I stood in line and I kept like wimping out, right? And I kept wimping out. And then they finally, um, somebody was like, this, uh, there's a real ghost in there. And they were like really shaken up by it. And I didn't go in. And to this day, I regret not seeing that ghost because it was probably so like boring or something, but it's just, it freaked me out so much. But it was one of those lessons that changed me forever because after that, I said, will I regret not doing this someday? Or will I regret, you know, not taking this action? And so this little moment there, but I'm not even kidding. I still deeply regret that I never went into that haunted house in charity to see the real ghost. That's it. <laughs> Uh, this happened in 1947 in Chicago. Um, there was a lady named Miss Wilhelmina. She was a cleaning lady. She was quite large, but I was small, so it's hard to tell. And she was black. Uh, she worked for Granny, who was an older lady who managed the building. And Miss Wilhelmina cleaned the sleeping rooms. You all know what those are? one-room apartments. Anyway, um, she cleaned this one for Miss Hazel, and Miss Hazel was a friend of my mother's, too. Both Granny and Miss Hazel doted on me. So I became Miss Wilhelmina's helper. Uh, my job was to clean all the chrome and the silver. Well, probably not silver. And we were very good friends. I, I just love that lady. 
So Christmas was coming, and my mother asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I said, another doll. But this one I wanted with Miss Wilhelmina's skin color. After a few weeks, after touring many department stores in our neighborhood and elsewhere, Mother confided in me that she didn't think Santa was making little black baby dolls. So I asked Miss Wilhelmina if that were true. I, well, what I asked her was, were there little girls like me, but her color skin? And she assured me there were. So I told, and she also said that she was a little girl at one time and grew up to be a, a woman, which scared me because I didn't want to grow up. I was being doted on, what the heck? So I told my mother that there were little baby, black baby dolls, and she went and asked Miss Wilhelmina where to find one. And Miss Wilhelmina told her, she, I did not ask about dolls, I asked about little girls. And mother explained that to me, and I told her if there were little black girls, they had to have baby dolls that looked like them. So she decided to go downtown, took a bus down Madison Street, and as she was going through a basically black neighborhood, she saw a black baby doll in the window. She hopped off the bus and <laughs> bought the doll. Christmas morning, I got up and the doll was underneath the Christmas tree, and I picked her up, little Willie. And I looked at my mother and I said, see, I told you Santa Claus would bring these a doll. <laughs> mother smiled. Uh, we had, it, it was a real learning experience for that whole year, going to Oklahoma and, find, and seeing that you had to have a, a white bathroom and a black bathroom. A white bathroom for men and one for women, but blacks had a share. Blacks had their own fountains that I couldn't imagine why. I got the impression that black folks did not like white folks much. And now when I got back to Chicago, I was very cool towards Miss Wilhelmina. I figured I was only there because Granny was doting on me. So finally Miss Wilhelmina went and asked my mother what the problem was. And I explained to her about seeing these black people had their own stuff and didn't want to be with us. Uh, I thought my mother was going to cry. She was not raised in the South. She did not understand it. But she explained to me the difference between whites and blacks and that it was the white people who made the difference. And, and she explained as best she could to a four-year-old what racism really was. And it, it was a lesson that I will never forget, nor will I forget Miss Wilhelmina. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your stories.
Okay, and now for our widening the circle of concern covenant. We, the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff, commit ourselves to the study and dismantling of racism and oppression within our congregation. We commit our congregation and ourselves to the work of anti-racism and anti-oppression. We commit ourselves to listening, to learning, and to action. When we fail, we commit ourselves to trying again and again. Covenant to begin this work and to continue until all of us can truly say that we are a beloved community of justice, equity, and compassion. This time, each week, we as individuals and members of this church consider questions of, what does it mean to participate in a beloved community? This month, in particular, we are considering compassion as a facet of our lives together in this, our beloved community. In the fullness of this endeavor, some things worth thinking about are, how does compassion benefit our congregation? How does compassion benefit us as individuals? How does our compassion impact our friends, our, our loved ones, and our greater community? Can we feel more compassion than we already do? Can we express even more compassion than we already do? I believe compassion is an extension of love and warmth is an extension of both. And I tell pretty much everybody, every stranger who walks in our door, how much warmth they will find in our church. I think it is what we really have going for us and I for one like to see us share it. Before I go any further, I, I want to say right now, uh, Judy, I thank you so much for your story. It was a wonderful story, and it's exactly the kind of things we need to be hearing and sharing. Okay, this is our fourth week of considering compassion, and in November, we will move on to another topic. On the wall are our thoughts and reflections from the first three weeks of this month. We leave them up for all of us to consider. Paper and pencils have already gone out, I see, which is good because we need to be moving along today. We're having a, a long day. Um, what we're going to be writing about is, we will have a few moments for you to contemplate and respond. Please write or draw your thoughts as you wish. You may sign your name or not as you wish. And if you are on Zoom, you may email your responses to wcoc at oakcliffuu.org to be added to our wall. Okay, you, most of you seem to already know the question. It's, this is the fourth week, I guess you would. This is it. How would your day change if you actively gifted compassion to others. And if you like, you can go over and look at what other people have written other weeks, um, and it may help you to formulate thoughts of your own, but otherwise, it, please do go look at what other people in the church have said. Now you have a few minutes, um, and I'll just be quiet.
Thank you. You can put your responses in the offering plate or turn them in after the service or bring them back next week if you're inspired to think longer about your response. Thank you all. Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place which is sacred to so many. To make an offering or your pledge, please go to oakcliffuu.org slash donate and follow the links. There is also information in your order of service. More Glorious Beginnings by Michael A. Schuler. We have reached the end of this time for the gathering of memory and for letting the imagination play with future possibilities. We have enjoyed magic moments and edified each other. Shall we conclude then? Or will this adventure now commenced, continue, or separate paths converging, meeting, merging, in the unending quest for love more perfect, the joyous struggle for meaning more sufficient, and life more abundant. Is this ending to be an ending, or merely the prelude to more glorious beginnings. I pose the question. In your hearts lies the answer.
minds and hearts with the spirit of this child. Extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Extinguimos ese llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en corazón este que es juntos otra vez. Mm -hmm. 